What causes food allergy? And what types of things are correlated with it? While we don't have hard and fast answers, scientists have discovered many intriguing clues. Let's take a look at some of these. There are a wide range of hypotheses about why food allergies develop. Some of the more popular ones include the hygiene hypothesis, antibiotics, pollution, pesticides, our Western diet and lifestyle, and even genetically modified foods. Our environment is much cleaner than in the past. We have cleaner water, fewer parasites, sterile food, antibiotic soaps, and all kinds of chemicals to rid our lives of microorganisms. But perhaps we've gone too far. The hygiene hypothesis postulates that the immune system may need to be trained by attacking harmful substances. When it can't find anything to attack, it starts to confuse harmless substances such as food proteins, pollen, animal dander, with dangerous invaders and attacks them instead. This hypothesis stemmed from observations that people who grew up on farms rarely developed allergies, and that people in developing countries who are often living in less than sanitary conditions are not experiencing the allergy epidemic of Western nations. There have also been studies showing differences in allergy rates among differing socioeconomic groups in the same country. For example, in Ghana, wealthy urban children have higher rates of autoimmune diseases than poorer or rural children. Other correlations that have made scientists consider the hygiene hypothesis are that children from larger families or those who live with pets or go to daycare have lower rates of food allergies. Some people say the hygiene hypothesis should be called the microbiome hypothesis because the idea is that our sterile, too clean environment has disrupted the normal microbiota, the bacteria and other microorganisms that inhabit our bodies, particularly our gut. In fact, if you subscribe to Allergy Bites, you'll know that children with food allergies have an abnormal gut microbiota compared to children without food allergies. Many people have looked towards antibiotics as another possible cause of food allergy. Research has shown that exposure to more than two courses of antibiotics in the first year of life is associated with nearly double the risk of food allergy. Meanwhile, a Princeton study found that worldwide antibiotic use has risen a staggering 36 percent in the decade between 2000 and 2010. They found the U.S. was the third largest uh, consumer worldwide of antibiotics after India and China. Americans consume an average of 22 units of antibiotics per person. Another interesting tidbit from this study, consumption of antibiotics was relatively stable or had moderately decreased in high-income countries with two exceptions, Australia and New Zealand, where antibiotic consumption had increased substantially. In Australia, it went from 25 units per person in 2000 to 87 units per person in 2010. That's four times higher than the average per person consumption of antibiotics in the U.S. Even if you don't take antibiotics yourself, you're not off the hook. Antibiotics are also found in our meat, produce, and drinking water. A recent FDA report suggested that 80% of antibiotics produced are used for animal feed. Apart from their medical uses, antibiotics help to rapidly fatten up animals. The U.S. Department of Agriculture funded a study to see if antibiotics in manure from antibiotic-fed animals could transfer to plants. They grew different plants in the manure and then tested them. They found that the antibiotic was present in fruits, vegetables, and the vegetable leaves in direct proportion to the amount of antibiotic in the soil. Antibiotics are also found in our water supply. Dozens of pharmaceuticals and other chemicals are in streams and rivers. 
And this includes antibiotics from animal feed and also from other drugs that we often, you know, flush down the toilet without a second thought. Maybe this is one of the reasons why water filters are becoming so popular. Pollution has also been suggested as a possible cause of the food allergy increase. This applies to both indoor and outdoor air. We know that traffic pollution can make health conditions such as asthma worse. It has even been positively correlated to the onset of new cases of asthma and suspected of being a contributor to asthma development. Exposure to air pollution in the first year of life has been correlated to higher rates of food allergies later in childhood. Scientists believe that there may be a developmental window in which sensitization to allergens occurs. Exposure to and the accumulation of pesticides in our bodies has also been given as a reason for the tremendous increase in food allergies. Pesticides in themselves are toxic chemicals, given that they've been designed to kill small creatures in order to preserve our food. Yet there's another aspect of pesticides that also makes sense in terms of the microbiome hypothesis. It turns out that some pesticides have antibiotic-like properties, and these may be disturbing our internal microbiome. We know that wherever people adopt a more Western lifestyle, the rates of food allergies increase. Even within the same country, those in higher socioeconomic groups living more like Western people experience more food allergies than their less well-off compatriots. So there is definitely something about our Western diet and lifestyle that is creating this. People debate the specifics, processed foods, a sedentary life, too much time indoors, etc. In fact, some people argue that many humans now lack vitamin D because we spend more time indoors and then use sunscreen when we are outside. Vitamin D deficiency has jumped in the past 15 or 20 years. GMOs have also been proposed as a reason behind the food allergy epidemic. This hypothesis is hotly debated. However, despite the controversy, it is also one of the many factors in our society that have changed since the onset of the food allergy epidemic, and so it is worth a mention. Some other possible causes of the food allergy epidemic are, include increased carbon dioxide levels, in utero or childhood exposure to acetaminophen, which is a pain reliever and fever reducer. Uh, brand names include Tylenol in the US or paracetamol in Australia, or babies getting too much folate. Or perhaps it is several of these causes working in combination. We're not sure what causes food allergies, but we know certain things that they are linked to.